G'day guys, welcome back to our series, uh, ranking the greatest Survivor players of all time, one season at a time. We are getting into season 12 now, Survivor Panama, Exile Island. If you do want to check out the previous videos uh, that we've done on the previous 11 seasons, hop over to the channel and feel free to subscribe if you'd like to see a bunch of the other videos coming up. Obviously we're only up to season 12, we've got a long way to go but it's been loads of fun going through them and comparing and analyzing and breaking down the best players ever in this game. And uh, now we're into the era of uh, idols and, you know, tribe swaps are old news. We're used to tribe swaps. Now we're into the uh, era of twists. So we've got immunity idols coming through. We've got Exile Island coming through. Uh, and we've got Final Three not too far away either. So there's a few different twists coming through. And Survivor Panama. We've got, we've got several people to talk about in this one. There's several standouts for different reasons uh, but we'll have to wait and see how they compare to the greatest players from the previous 11 seasons which are listed down below so the greatest players from the first 11 seasons which we've gone through in previous videos down below in the description down below in the comments Panama we're going to kick it off with Lamina so Lamina were a, the tribe that went down in numbers and were essentially picked off after the merge by the Kasaya tribe I think a lot of it was to do with the fact that the Kasaya tribe wanted to go to the end with some of the other people in the Kasaya tribe because they weren't the most likable bunch necessarily. Some of them were, some of them weren't. <laughs> it was a crazy group. Whereas Lamina were a bit more like just, you know, a couple of nice young guys, one nice young gal, and this uh, older ex... Uh, what was what was Terry? Uh, he was in the Navy, I think he was, yeah. This older guy who had a son and, and maybe more kids, I'm not sure. But yeah, a family man, and it was all a bit bit different. Um, so yeah, it was kind of obvious to pick them off uh, and avoid going to the end with them, avoid aligning with them, and just try and go to the end with essentially what it became, Courtney. Uh, it was almost like the glue who kept the whole Kasai tribe together because everyone wanted to go to the end with her. Uh, and we'll get to that later on, how that kind of unraveled at the seams, but essentially the standout from Lamina ended up being Terry. Terry was always safe before the merge, so I'll give him a lot of credit for that. He went to Tribal Council, I think, at least three times before the merge and was not in danger ever. He had a hidden immunity idol from very early on, and then he just won every immunity challenge after the merge until the final four, when he was finally beaten by the young bull defeated the old bull, when Aris finally defeated Terry. But Terry was still safe because he had an immunity idol, so it didn't really matter too much. <laughs> it just meant Iris and Terry were both safe, and uh, yeah, Sari and Danielle had to make some fire. And then finally he was then voted off at the final three uh, by after losing that challenge as well. After t Iris and Terry both lost that challenge to Danielle, who would later come back for Survivor Heroes as villains, of course, and probably more well-known for that these days. So Terry, one thing I didn't notice as a kid, I just saw the old tough guy winning all the challenges and I was like yep that's my guy I'm obviously rooting for him nowadays I root for different people if I watch Panama again uh it's yeah you you do realize that Terry actually didn't have the greatest social game but did that come down to the fact that he was one man against the world <laughs> well not quite the world I mean it's the Kasaya 6 you know as intimidating as that force is you know <laughs> one man against the rest of the players in the game don't know. And he also knew that he was getting voted off anyway. So part of it from Terry, I think, was he didn't care because he knew that he was getting voted off no matter what. If he didn't have some kind of immunity around his neck or some kind of immunity in his pocket, he would whip out. So, but again, if you, you the side members are going to make up most of the jury, though. So he's got to make sure that he's probably already got, you know, Austin and Sally... Um, he's probably already got Austin and Sally's vote. It's now just getting the rest of the Kasai members to vote for him and yeah, he could have done a better job with that by the sounds of it. So that's where you really knock down Terry. Um, he didn't really have much of a strategic game, but he couldn't really have much of a strategic game because he was always the obvious boot if you ever lost immunity. So really unique situation. Very Mike Holloway-esque in, you know, Worlds Apart or, you know, anyone who's sort of like been, you know, down in numbers, the obvious boot, and they just feel like they have to keep on winning immunity to stick around. It's a bit like what Joe became essentially in, you know, in Second Chance, he, in Cambodia and Edge of Extinction, Joe kind of had that same mindset. It's like, well, I just, that's my game. I just have to win immunities the whole way through and that's it. So we're going to put Terry, hmm, just looking down at the list now. 
Terry for me, just because of the lack of social game. And another knock against Terry is I don't think the competition was that fierce in Panama Exile Island. I think early on it was once you had like you know the other the other Lamina members there, but then once it came down to the Kasaya Six, you're really just battling out battling out with Terry and maybe Danielle as well. Danielle's quite a good athlete. Um, Aris is quite a good athlete, uh, but other than that, I don't know. You know, like Suri and Courtney are not really threatening in challenges. Bruce was really unwell. Uh, yeah, I just don't think the competition was that high for Terry, and I don't know if Terry's actually as good of a challenge competitor as you. Th- think he might be based on his level of competition i'd say even like in palau tom had tougher competition in like uh greg and ian in every challenge and stephanie as well even jen as well jen was a good athlete as well jen was there with like danielle it's like a really good really good uh female athlete as well um yeah i'd i'd put terry down so terry's basically going to go down into uh, right behind, if you guys see the list down below, towards the bottom of the list, in between, he's ahead of Gary Hogaboom from Guatemala and behind Julie Berry from Vanuatu. Almost the complete opposite of Julie Berry. Julie Berry, phenomenal social game. Absolutely fantastic. And in the end, I think, ended up being on the wrong side of the numbers and then because she was a bigger jury threat than everyone else in the game except for maybe Chris, uh, she was voted off at the final five. Whereas with... Uh, Obviously, Gary Hogaboom is a little bit more similar to Terry, <laughs> but he just could, didn't have the immunity challenge wins to back it up. Did have the idol, did have the grizzled older guy who everyone's kind of rooting for as the underdog, did have that story, but just wasn't able to stick around for about as, for as long. So putting Terry in that spot, and I'll let you know the final number officially, but it's roughly around number 17, 18, 19 at the moment back down there behind Julie and ahead of Gary. We're going into Kasaya now. First of all, Aris. Aris seems to get credit as the guy who was the glue to hold the Kasaya 6 together. I don't think that's the case. I like Aris before I go off into my point about why I don't think he's actually that good as a winner and he just happened to be there. But I don't think Aris really did anything um, other than just have a good enough social game. The glue that holds a lot of these alliances together often is the like people want to go to the end with certain people in the alliances i don't think the omatepes was zombies who are just like a cult one run by rob i think they literally just wanted to go to the end with philip because he was horrendously irritating and a complete social socially he's a complete idiot um and then also uh Rob as well, who had already won the million dollars, you know, essentially with his wife and won a lot of other prize money from other reality shows. Uh, and then also Natalie too, because Natalie really wasn't playing the game at all. She was just doing what Rob told her. And uh, that was the at least the impression that a lot of the people out there had, even probably the other, the other Omatepes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think having common people you want to go to the end with is, is a big deal. And I think that's really what... I think having Courtney there, and to a lesser extent having Shane there and Danielle, I think made the Kasaya 6 stick together and go, yeah, I want to go to the end with these people because we can, I can beat them. Now, but Courtney was the big one, obviously. And Iris, as great as he was for going along with Ceri's plan uh, to do the one of the best moves in Survivor history at that point, you can definitely make the argument it is the best move in Survivor history at this point, where Ceri... First of all, figures out that Courtney is actually a gigantic threat because everyone wants to go to the end with her because she's easy to beat. So she's like, well, that means other people aren't going to want to take me to the end if they want to take Courtney. So Courtney's actually the biggest threat. So let's take out Courtney. And the only way she could do it is to get her, Iris, and Danielle to vote together in the final six. That's three. It's not a majority. But it is a majority if the other three are voting differently, which Sari made sure that they were through giving them decoy plans and going along with their decoy plans while really making sure that she just had Terry Terry voting differently to Shane and Courtney. Fantastic, absolutely amazing move. I'm sure other videos, and if you just watch the footage, watch the episode and the final six in Survivor Panama, Exile Island, you probably will get a much better breakdown of what, what happened. But yeah, fantastic move. Uh, good that Iris was there to go along with it, but I think Iris was just there to go along with it the whole time. Iris also winning, doing well in challenges. I do give him a bit of credit for that, but quickly we're just going to rate Iris because I think he's lovely guy, 
good social game, good at challenges, totally unremarkable, really didn't do much at all. Um, and I think if you put a lot of just like young guys who have a good, you know, who are likable in that position, I think they win as well. They just end up, Iris just, he got kind of lucky for, you know, he kind of just cruised on through. So Aris is right behind Lex Vandenberg, who did a, who was a lot more aggressive, dug himself holes, but dug himself out by winning immunities. And winning immunities against tough competition too, especially in Ethan in Survivor Africa. Uh, so I've got him, I've got Aris just behind Lex and just ahead of Sandra Diaz Twine, uh, which again, just so you guys have a full idea, it, this is only based on their season that we've covered. So we're not counting Sandra's future season. Sandra may move up or even down based on her future seasons. We'll have to wait and see. But for now, Aris, and Aris is the same. He also came back. So Aris is right in there behind Lex and ahead of Sandra. Uh, we'll break down the final numbers afterwards. Um, and now finally we've got to Sari, who we've just mentioned her best move in the game. I think the maybe the best move in Survivor history at this point in the first 12 seasons. Uh, just absolutely fantastic. Really had to work to save herself early on, like in the very first Tribal Council when she is the obvious first boot because she's struggling in the elements. Her social game comes through and she manages to throw Tina under the bus. Second episode, she gets swapped into... They break down into four into two tribes from four. Uh, Sari is immediately on the chopping block with, I think it was Melinda. And it's either her or Melinda, and they voted off Melinda. Then, Sari doesn't go to Tribal Council for a while after that, but by that time, she's in control. She's running the show, and from then on, she's all good. And uh, Shane Powers described her best. Gangster in an Oprah suit is Sari Fields. It's such a cool description. Um, I really didn't like Shane as a kid. Like, I grew up on a farm in the middle of nowhere. Like, people are kind of quiet and reserved and a bit more introverted. And Shane just seemed like a loudmouth, just very confrontational he still kind of is very confrontational but i kind of really learned to appreciate shane just as a person and also just as a survivor character like both as yeah really really good and um shane is obviously i think it is a cliche but i think shane is one of the uh, biggest sort of names in survivor that people want to see come back um and i'm happy to jump on board that bandwagon um he's probably if i made a list of top 10 he's in the top 10 for sure for me um, he was one of the few people I was disappointed with the second chance list didn't get on for this game though Shane is not going to make the rankings um, he did he played a good game he just got outplayed by Sari at the end of the day and perhaps by Aris as well but it seemed like it was Sari who really came up with the final six move that kind of really just took Shane's plans completely out from under him and uh, Shane was a big one who was banging on about going to the end with Courtney and uh Iris has talked about Shane as being like an amazing salesperson. He'll give you like an amazing pitch to like vote off someone in a, in a tribal council or he's really good at that part of the game. But uh, yeah, Shane has uh, not quite made the list as great of a character as he is. Back to Sari again. So yeah, we've basically covered Sari. Uh, Sari I'm going to put in, there is a top tier, I think, with the best of our players so far. Um... And I think Sari is in that top tier. I think Sari's there. I think when you look at like the top eight currently, they're all players who did do a fair bit in the game to get themselves to the end, at least compared to other players. Maybe not so much Tina and Richard, but Tina and Richard are still in there anyway. Uh, at six and seven. Or are they? No, just Sari is going to jump ahead of them. So I've got Sari at number six, uh, right in behind Boston Rob who we're just counting Boston Rob again, just from Marquesas and All-Stars. So Sari is in there at number six in our final rankings after the first 12 seasons. To give you an idea, uh, I'll run down the entire list just right now and end the video. So if you don't, if you're happy just to read the list below, just shut the video off if you want. <laughs> the next 30 seconds or so will just be me reading numbers and names. So I'll give you guys an update on just through the video form uh, who... Uh, the greatest players are after the first 12 seasons and rough up the video uh, it is number one <clears throat> Tom Westman all that's actually go you know, the opposite way although it's kind of you know for a bit of theatre 22 Brian Heideck if you want to hear the reasons why I think Brian Heideck is overrated um, feel free to 
check out the uh, greatest survival players after the first five seasons video where I kind of break that down. Why Brian is not really that high. He's still a contender, but he's not really that high. 21, Jake Billingsley. Yes, I've got Jake as a better player than Brian from Thailand. But that's it for Thailand in the ranking video. 20, Gary Hogaboom. 19, Terry Dietz. 18, Julie Berry. 17, Rupert. You know who Rupert is. 16, same thing, Sandra. Don't have to say the surname. 15, Aris. 14, Lex. 13, Vesepia. 12, Teresa. 11, Ethan. Colby kicks off our top 10. Johnny Fairplay is 9. Richard Hatch is 8. Tina is 7. Sari is 6. Boston Rob at 5. New York Rob. Rob Cessonino at 4. Chris Doherty at 3. Danny Boatwright at 2. And yeah, I spoiled it before. Tom Westman is so far the best player of all time after the first 12 seasons, in my humble opinion. We'll see you guys in another video. I will have a. Uh, the next one will probably be a power rankings video after post season post episode three post episode three of Cyber 46 uh but i might squeeze another cheeky video in before then i'll we'll have to wait and see so see you guys in another video have a great day night whatever it is and uh yeah see you guys soon peace